Alrighty, Hi everyone, I am Blaze here. So in this video, I want to talk about how I make playing the bar class really easy with my particular setup here. It looks kind of scary, you look at my UI, but it's actually pretty, it, it helps out a lot. So let me get into it. So the first thing I would recommend as a bard, if you want to play bard, holy smokes. That's one person. Okay, let's get back on track. <laughs> First thing I would recommend is getting an MMO mouse, just go on Amazon, or a, a programmable mouse. So they have 12 buttons on them, that's kind of the key. I think about 25 bucks is not that bad of a deal, but 30 bucks. This has been the single biggest quality of life improvement that I have ever made playing this game. It's really awkward to go back to the old mouses after using one of these, even for other video games beyond this. It's not that much money to make it really easy to play this game. So. I would recommend definitely getting a programmable mouse. And what the programmable mouse does is it, you can set it, uh, the programmable mouse basically has 12 keys on it. You can set them to each one of the 12 little macros that you have here on your number pad. And it also corresponds with your number key your number pad. So without the number pad, if you really want to twist, say like on P99 or even on live, you're going to have to constantly swap your right hand from your mouse back to your number pad, back and forth, and you're really going to wreck yourself. You're going to get carpal tunnel and all that. So I'd strongly recommend getting an MMO mouse because it'll eliminate a lot of that fatigue with your hand and all the difficulty, a lot of the difficulty for that matter. So beyond that, let's talk about how I actually have my settings. Nothing really of huge note, but let's take a look. There's anything. Movement. One of the things I would recommend is, let's take a look. Target, this is the first one. Um, I have tab bound to cycle to nearest NPCs. So what that lets me do if there's any mobs nearby, I don't have to actually physically click on that. Watch, I don't have to click on that guy. It'll just target him automatically. So if I press the tab key, it'll cycle between a bunch of different targets, which is really helpful if you're charm kiting because the mobs are all bunched up right on top of each other. There's no way you'll be able to target it. Um, I also have Q bound to myself. So anytime I press Q, it goes first person which is helpful if you're trying to change looking up or down or whatever it might be. And then the big stuff, this is really the big thing, is how I have the hotbar set up. So what you want to do with your hotbar, uh, hotbar number one corresponds to this, to all the macros I've made. Now hotbar number one, how you want to have it, is normally it's set for your number pad, but you can I mean, normally it's set for the top numbers, one, two, three, four, five on the top, but then you want to also set it for your number pad as the alternate. And um, when you do that, it'll set it up for your mouse, so your mouse will be good to go. And one other thing that I recommend doing is if you want to have an ability automatically go off, say like if you're playing P99 and you want to level up sense heading, um, yeah, sense heading, you want to keep refreshing tracking, you want to keep forge going, you want to level up sneak and hide, I'd recommend setting your left key, A, to number 9 on, or whatever you're going to use, whatever repeated macro you want to use on your, uh, on your hotbar. As well, you can even do it to number 10. If you want to set the D key or the right turn key, you can set that to something else. And it makes it really easy to level up these skills or to automatically do it. Just by by playing the game, you'll automatically do these things. It gets kind of annoying, though, sometimes because I'll automatically have junk just go into my hand, which I really don't care for, but hey, you win some, you lose some. So that's that particular portion. Now let me show how I actually have my macro set up. So just a general good macro for everything for bards is... Having stop song first, cast for the spell gem, and then if applicable, have a bandolier thing. So bandoliers, you press B on the keys, and you can make, prior to AAs, you can make four. 
I have a bandolier for each one of my particular instrument sets. And what it lets me do is quickly swap instruments. So on my keybinds, I have percussion bound to 10, brass bound to key 11, and string bound to button 12. So it lets me automatically swap instruments, say if I'm doing a melody. So if you see me swap instruments doing a melody, that's me pressing my MMO mouse. It makes it really easy to swap instruments to get the best bonuses that you possibly can. But if you're going to manually twist, you can actually put the bandolier in itself. So anytime I'm pressing one, it's going to go to percussion. If I press for cantana, it's going to automatically swap to stringed. If I do McBaxi, it's automatically going to swap to the horn, which is really, really nice. Um, some of the other macros, you might want to add in a little bit of text. So whenever I charm, I tend to also mark the mob. I mark it NPC1 so everyone in the group can see that. And uh, I have a little bit of text. If you do uh, percent sign T, that's its target. Um, some other things you might want to do. You can even have macros to bind using a item. So what do I mean by that? So if you look at my melody commands, it's same thing with melody. You want to do stop song, melody, use the, uh, the, the song sets. You can really only do four at a time. And then you can have a macro to use any of your, inst well, use any of your items uh, in your inventory. So for this instance, whenever I click this melody, J Boots refreshes. There we go. And the same thing, you can even make a multiple item use thing. Like I have on my Necro, I use the Fungi Staff, J Boots, and my Circlet of Shadows for Invis all at the same time. And then I put a sit command at the end. Um, this is the one for Art Shielding and J boots, and this is really helpful for raid mobs that dispel. You really want to make a macro, especially if you're a bard playing resists. On all my resist melodies, I have a macro that refreshes my junk buffs. Basically, you can only really do one though. I've noticed I tried putting both of my junk buffs in here. I have a slot to, but it seems to interrupt the melody every time. So I don't think you can do that without it wrecking the melody. You can do one though. You can do one. Junk buff refresh. Um, and uh, how did you? How do you make the? You can also do one thing too, where you can put multiple combat abilities or just general actions onto a single macro, and how that works. So I think it's marked. It's based upon the slot. So tracking is in the first slot. Four is in two, three, four, five, six. They're on the right side. I'm not sure about these ones, but I'm pretty sure they also have ability markers. Anyways, um, so if you do this, if you make a macro with this, it doesn't show when the ability has been used, but every time I press this, it does it refreshes tracking and it hits the forge button simultaneously, which is nice. And you can do this, you can make even one on the other side, say, if you want to have kick bound, kick, disarm, and taunt, I have that on my ranger. So every time I press that this key right here, it'll do kick, taunt, and disarm, which is really nice. So automatically do all that. Um, what else? Is there any other really major? This one's a pretty big one. So if I charm a mob, is there anything up? I'm going to go charm something, and I'm going to show how it works. So, one of the, uh, if you're going to do a lot of charm kiting, I would strongly recommend to get a goblin gazugi ring. It's an item that does a, a targeted invisibility versus animals. And what that does... It's an insta-clack... Insta click invis. And what it does is if you have a charm mob and you click invis, so 
So it's in its charm for a full minute. If I use this macro, target myself, the invis goes off, bam. Done. One moment, let me kill this guy. <sighs> Alright, so it'll instantly break charmed. And why it's useful is because, say, if you're charm kiting, you have 10 mobs beating on your pet simultaneously. And you want to wait till the very last possible second to break that charm. You want to break charm right before your pet dies so you can finish it off. Um, but with as little health as possible because it means that's the less dots that you have to play. The more health that you give that mob means the longer time it's going to take you to kill it and finish it off. So it's a really fine balance. If you, if you wait too late in the charm, the mob gets killed before the charm gets broken. You just lost out on all the EXP. It really stinks. But if you break the charm too early, then it's going to take forever to kill that mob with your own dot. So it's kind of a balance. So this is the macro I recommend. You have to target yourself. You have to wait a few seconds. And then you can use the Goblin Gazuki Ring to charm instantly break the charm. I think you can also use called like mosquito boots or something but it's a in a later expansion you can get the goblin gazuki ring come uh, kunark it's just a real pain and now let's talk about all this stuff i have here this whole nightmare so uh it's a standard assist key let's keep going this is just stuff i use for raids to tell people so if i charmed a mob if we should push it because it's going to cast if tash it dispels the occlusion went off um these are my bandolier macros so you do bandolier slash bandolier activate and then whatever you titled the, the bandolier itself just another macro let's take a look these are all my melody macros and i have them tied to the color scheme of my mem spell sets so one two three four temporary i change this all the time my melody set for if i'm soloing this is for if i'm doing run speed and trying to get buffs these are for grouping or rating and these are for resist um and then if you want to mark npcs uh, slash M mark NPC that works in a group and if for raids you want to do slash R mark NPC that'll mark a mob for all everybody in a raid and you have three maximum um, in terms these are my this is kind of my pulling bar the quick stuff I send so if I'm pulling I'll use that command I, I very I don't really use it that much anymore though maybe in the future but it, it helps because sometimes bad stuff happens and you can't type it out so you can just click one of these macros and instantly let them know, like, there, this is a big one. And I have three mobs, there's no way I'm going to be able to type this quick. Prep CC for possible bad pull. Um, yeah. Yeah, this stuff absolutely helps. Or if bad stuff happens. <laughs> also, it helps to have a train macro. And then this top stuff, this is just my mem spell set. So I have a bunch of different spend, uh, spell sets that I use. Um, for any particular scenario, that's all these are. So my UI looks kind of scary, but it's really not. It's 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 organized pretty logically. And then when it comes to this, pretty much all these macros are the same. The only thing I change is the color that it looks on the outside, and I changed basically what I want. So this blue corresponds to grouping regular. Should have this go green. This uh, yellow corresponds to travel and solo purple corresponds with my rating ones my rating spell sets and green corresponds to that group damage shield one and a big reason of why you want to have these you don't really need to you don't really need to make all these different macros they just help Especially on P99 when you don't have space, safe spell sets, and you're not sure what you put in every single slot. This can kind of give you a quick reference. But it's there. It's absolutely there. And it, it even helps me when I'm playing on live, even though they are safe spell sets. 
Um, is there anything else I'd like to mention? No, not necessarily. Um, oh, I know, I know one. F1. So if you press F1 on your keyboard, it targets you. And if you have a pet, if you press it twice, it'll go to your pet. And the same thing uh, with the group slots. So F2 would be like the first group member. And if they have a pet, it'd be F2 twice, and it'll target their pet. Same thing all the way down to F6 for your sixth group member, which is really nice. It, that helps out a lot. So that's all of my macros. That's all my keybinds. So thank you guys all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.